Hi, I'm Tom, application engineer here at Sonodyne, specialising in our Origin ADCP family of products. Your Origin 600 requires calibrating before every deployment. A slight change in the local magnetic field can cause errors in your heading data. Calibrating the unit ensures that any change in the local magnetic field won't affect the unit's ability to correctly find magnetic north once deployed. To successfully complete the calibration, the unit must be placed in 12 different positions. Each of these positions is a calibration reading used to determine the local magnetic field and disregard any anomalies, such as a large metal frame, batteries or sensors that may be placed near the unit. It's important when calibrating that it's done in a large open space, ideally 5 metres away from any source of magnetic interference. The exception to this is lifting equipment, which can be placed at least a metre above your ADCP. Before we get into it, make sure you like this video, subscribe and hit the notification button keep up to date with everything new from Sonodyne. First we'll demonstrate how to calibrate our Origin 600 ADCP in a four-sided frame. Before we start, we'll need to set our three main headings, which will be distributed evenly over 360 degrees. At this point, it may be useful to label each side of your frame. Point the first side north. This side will be pointed in three directions at a 45 degree tilt to give us the best results. For example, if we imagine a compass, the first direction will be north at zero degrees. The second direction will be 120 degrees and the third direction will be 240 degrees. We will then move to each side of the frame and repeat this process until we have 12 calibration points. The calibration percentage will increase by 7% after each calibration point. An important note before you begin your calibration, you must ensure that your ADCP is in the same physical configuration as it will be when deployed. For example, if you're using external batteries or acoustic releases, these must be in the same physical position and orientation as they will be when deployed. When moving to each position, it should be done in a smooth, continuous motion. Once in the calibration position, it's important that the Origin 600 does not move. If the unit is moving whilst taking readings of the heading, it will result in a bad calibration. You can see the result of this in sample RMS that is calculated once the calibration is finished. Once your frame is ready, connect your subcon cable to your Origin and the other end to your PC. Details of how to do this are in the Origin 600 manual. Once connected to Origin, open the web UI and navigate to the settings page. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the calibration area. Before we go any further, the Origin must be in its first position, tilted so that the side which is forward is up in the air. Once we are in this position and steady, we can press start. This will take the first measurement. Then we'll move the Origin 600 around to face 120 degrees and we will hold it steady, maintaining the 45 degree tilt. The unit will take a measurement when it senses a lack of movement on its pitch and roll axis. If the unit is moving slightly in its calibration position, it may take a bad reading. Rotate to the next position 120 degrees clockwise, so that the chosen front side is now pointing to 240 degrees. Again, with the unit at 45 degrees to the vertical, hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 23%. Prepare for the next calibration position by locating the next edge anti-clockwise from the current forward edge. We will call this edge 2. Rotate another 120 degrees clockwise so that edge 2 is now pointed north or 0 degrees whilst tilted at 45 degrees with respect to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 30%. Rotate another 120 degrees clockwise so that edge 2 is now pointed 120 degrees whilst tilted at 45 degrees with respect to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 38%. Rotate to the next position 120 degrees clockwise, so edge 2 is now pointing at 240 degrees, again with the unit 45 degrees to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 46%. Prepare for the next step by locating the next edge anti-clockwise from the current forward edge we will call this edge 3. Rotate another 120 degrees clockwise so that edge 3 is now pointed north, or 0 degrees, whilst tilted at 45 degrees with respect to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 53%. Rotate another 120 degrees clockwise so that edge 3 is now pointed 120 degrees, whilst at a 45 degree angle with respect to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 61%. 
Rotate to the next position 120 degrees clockwise so that edge 3 is now pointed 240 degrees. Again, with the unit at 45 degrees to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 69%. Prepare for the next step by locating the next edge anti-clockwise from the current forward edge. We will call this edge 4. Rotate another 120 degree clockwise so that edge 4 is now pointed north or 0 degrees whilst tilted at 45 degrees with respect to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 76%. Rotate another 120 degrees clockwise so that edge 4 is now pointed at 120 degrees whilst tilted at 45 degrees with respect to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 84%. Rotate to the next position 120 degrees clockwise, so edge 4 is now pointing at 240 degrees. Again, with the unit at 45 degrees to the vertical. Hold the device in this position until the progress bar increments to 92%. Once the last calibration point is taken, it will auto-complete and the results will be displayed beside X, Y and Z coverage and sample RMS. If the results shown are more than 60% coverage on the X and Y axis and greater than 15% on the Z axis, with a standard deviation of less than 0.07, this can be considered a good calibration. It's really important to make sure that your Origin 600 ADCP is always calibrated before its next deployment to ensure the best possible results for your mission. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions about what we've covered today, please get in touch via sonodyne.com or through your local Sonodyne office. Thanks for watching.